what is going on guys welcome back to harry potter it has been quite some time since i have recorded or played in fact um life happens and i've just been you know really busy with other stuff so sorry if uh you have been watching and were wondering what happened but uh here's uh, the next video for you guys and i hope you enjoy we're gonna start off with uh where we left off use the breathing pen to breathe the thestrals I'm just going to go check that out right now. <clears throat> mm. Alright, now if I remember right, it's been a while, but I think the Thestrals are in here. Yes. 15 more minutes. Okay. To be more breeze, come to another bend. Okay. Alright. So it looks like I am just waiting on that. So in that case, we're going to go ahead and do one of these little side missions here. Let's see here. Go to the summoner's court board. Yeah, what's this? Speak with Sebastian in the Undercraft. Let's go do that real quick, shall we? Uh, I'll get over there. So in this corridor is probably closer. Alright. Rebellion. Gotta get these buttons back. It's been quite a while since I've played. Looks like it's winter time. Urge defending Hogsmeade against Trev. Yeah. Enter. See, You'll yeah. never believe what I've learned. What did you discover in the spellbook we found in the scriptorium? Salazar Slytherin's spellbook was a little difficult to interpret, but fascinating. Evidently, he encouraged teaching dark magic at Hogwarts. Neither the Imperious Curse nor the Killing Curse was unforgivable during his time. He believed students should be prepared to use dark magic when necessary, not to fear it. That's why we had to use Crucio to gain access to the scriptorium. He didn't want his knowledge shared with anyone who was afraid of the power of dark magic. Hmm. Uh. It was hard to do, but casting Crucio was our only option. And I'm glad we did it, because in the spellbook I also found something else. References to a lost relic, which, from what I can tell, grants the holder the power to reverse dark magic curses. And you think this relic might be able to save Anne? Precisely. I plan to search for this relic, but I don't think we should tell anyone. Especially Ominous. He wouldn't understand. Mm hmm. I see no reason to involve Ominous. I'm glad you agree. When I know more, I shall send an owl. And don't feel sorry for Ominous. Keeping this to ourselves for now is for his own good. <laughs> I'll decide what's for my own good. <gasps> Ominous. We were just about to get some air. Care to join? You're a liar, Sebastian. I heard everything. You swore you'd never engage in anything to do with dark magic again. No, I didn't. I said I understood you wanting that. I'd never swear to give up on finding a cure for Anne. You don't know when to stop, do you? I know when not to stop. Leave this alone, Ominous. I'll be on my way. Hmm... Great, now I get to get bitched at. I am not Dang. letting this go. No? Ominous, Sebastian meant well. I know what I heard. You knew I wouldn't agree with this. Going after that relic is not a good idea. Sebastian doesn't even realize it, but he's as irresponsible and reckless now as his parents were years ago. It's why they died. What? I knew his parents died. 
But I never heard what happened. Mr. and Mrs. Sallow were professors. Spent nearly every waking moment in the cellar library. And those was buried in books. Anne and Sebastian were upstairs when it happened. They heard a sudden crash and ran downstairs, but it was too late. Their parents had crumpled to the floor. A defect with the lamp in the cellar caused the room to fill with an undetectable toxin. Sebastian and Anne were helpless. They had no magic yet. What a horrible story. It is. That's why I can't understand Sebastian's recklessness. I've practically lost Anne. I cannot lose Sebastian, too. Please avoid anything to do with that spellbook. Hmm. Those references in the book seem promising. Everything to do with Salazar Slytherin seems promising until it's too late. I hope Sebastian pursues this no further. But if you think he might, please let me know. It would mean a lot. I don't like making these decisions. They're hard. Is there anything in this room? Revenue. Hmm. I don't think so. Let's see here. Let's go talk to Nutty. Frustrating. You wanted to speak with me, Mother? I had hoped to speak with you alone, Natsai. Your message mentioned your concern about an unusual creature that was spotted in the woods near Hogsmeade. That could have been anything. You know what it was, Natsai. I am allowed to leave the castle. I am always careful, Mother. Careful? Officer Singer disagrees. She sent me an owl telling me that you have been trying to collect evidence of some kind against dark wizards. She <laughs> berated me for not keeping a closer eye on you. And she is right. I do not want you visiting Hogsmeade for the near future. But mother! My little gazelle, you are well-intentioned, but you must not meddle in the affairs of dangerous people. If someone had meddled in Matabilaland, father would still be with us. <sighs> I must get to class. Perhaps your friend can get you to listen to reason. So frustrating. She never listens to me. She called you her little gazelle. Is that a term of endearment where you're from? It is specific to me. <sighs> I am the unusual creature in Hogsmeade she mentioned. No. Self-transfiguration is not taught at Hogwarts. So I am gently discouraged from practicing it. An animagus? I am an animagus. And it is in my gazelle form that I have been able to wander the highlands rather freely until now. Much to my mother's chagrin. That is how I managed to spy on Rookwood and Harlow. That's awesome. Were you born an animagus? Or did you learn to become one? Animagi are not born. The process is quite elaborate. It involves holding a mandrake leaf in one's mouth for an entire month, then placing the leaf in a crystal file so that it is imbued with moonlight, then adding one of your own hairs. What? And that is just the beginning. Self-transfiguration is common among students at Wagadu, but Professor Weasley considers it much too dangerous to teach at Hogwarts. Hmm. Can you choose what form your animagus will take? Oh, no. A person's animagus form is determined by their personality. My mother is convinced that my form is a gazelle because I adapt well to any situation. I believe it is because I can sense danger and keep my wits about me. <laughs> Probably both. How does it feel to transform into an animal? Well, the first time, it can be a bit unnerving. I felt a kind of searing pain and a strong double heartbeat. But it gets easier the more you do it. I no longer feel any pain, and I must say, I find a sense of comfort in the double heartbeat. Hmm. And I love being able to view the world from a different perspective. Do I get to learn to be an animagus? Now the nickname makes sense. What an extraordinary ability to have. 
It is. I love transforming, but Mother is less enthusiastic about it. She says that no creature, especially one as rare as a gazelle, should be bounding about where poaching has become so prevalent. <sighs> she claims that she has foreseen tragedy befall me in my gazelle form. But she has used her sight to control me too many times. I no longer believe it. <laughs> uh... She's concerned for your safety. It may be best for you to stay away from Hogsmeade for now. That may be safe, but I do not believe that it would be best. Do you? You could have fled the moment you discovered that Rookwood, Harlow, and Randrock were after you. But you did not. I choose to act as you have. I must deal with Rookwood and Harlow, not hide from them. Mm. My mother cannot know where I am all the time. Mm, guess that is Thank true. you for being here during that rather awkward conversation. Yeah, no problem. All right. Let's do uh, this one. I might need to wait until morning. Wait. The Pink Smedleys will always look upon you as a trusted ally and friend. Hi. Hello, Grace. What are you doing here? Nice to see you. Thank you again for your help at the lake. I've become quite good at Summoner's Court, and I'm waiting for my next opponent. I suppose that's you. I suppose so. Shall we begin? Uh, I'm game. Yeah. Well, let's see what you're made of. The Pink Smedleys will always look upon you as a trusted okay. ally and friend. Uh. Oh. Wow. Okay. You didn't see that. Uh, it's been so long. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, dang it. She had a hundred on that? Oh, That's heck no. Alright, we're hitting you off then. Alright. That wasn't what I wanted to see. Man, I'm never gonna win this. I gotta get a hundred. Okay. E yes. What a remarkable Heck shot. yeah, boy. Well, it appears I've been bested. That was definitely a little more difficult. <laughs> but I did it. Well done. Diving, summoner's court, seems there's nothing you can't do. Well? You played a good game though, Grace. I did play rather well, didn't I? Only one student has ever beaten me. She's very good. But if you play the way you did against me, you might stand a chance. Great. All right. <coughs> mm, excuse me. Let's see here. Um, dairy call. Collect the field guide page from the book on animate transfiguration in the library. Let's do that. To the library. Alright. It's upstairs, I guess. It's kind of nice. It's telling me exactly where to go. <laughs> ah. 
Revenue. That book Professor Weasley asked me to find. She's looking for the book Intermediate Transfiguration. Yeah. Professor Weasley asked me to uh, get something from that book. May I have it? Did she now? I'll give you this book if you humor me by answering a few questions from my quiz. Oh, quiz. God. Some people call bits of knowledge trivia. I would argue that no knowledge is trivial. Hence, I have created a small quiz just for fun, focusing mainly on the lore of the wizarding world. None of the other students will try it, no matter how many times I ask. They all say they have enough with schoolwork. Oh, they don't value knowledge the way I do. Surely you're interested. I'll even start you off with a few of my easiest questions. I guess I don't have a choice, do I? A quiz sounds like fun. Splendid! Just a few questions, and then I'll hand over this book. Let us begin. Before right. the invention of the Golden Snitch, which magical creature was used in a game of Quidditch? Uh, oh, uh, the Golden Snidget. The Golden Snidget. Correct! <laughs> the Snidget was first introduced to Quidditch in 1269 by a wizard named Barbarous Bragg. Sadly, they're thought to be extinct. Next question. Which potion is commonly referred to as liquid luck? Ah, Felix Felicius. Felix Felicius. Well done. Since I knew it that one. Drinker temporarily lucky. Felix Felicis is a banned substance in all organized competitions. The tale of the three brothers involves which magical artifacts? Ah, the Deathly Hallows. The Deathly Hallows. Correct. According to Beedle the Bard, the Deathly Hallows consists of the Elder Wand, the Resurrection Stone, and the Cloak of Invisibility. Which ball in Quidditch is the largest? The Quaffle. I think. Or is it the bludger? Uh. The quaffle. That's right. Yes. When the chaser throws the quaffle through one of three hoops in a Quidditch match, their team is awarded 10 points. True or false? Polyjuice potion allows the drinker to change species. Uh. Technically, yes. Hermione turned into a cat. So. Uh. I feel like a, this has got to be a trick question. False. Correct. Yes! While Polyjuice Potion can be used to change things such as age or race, it cannot be used to change species. Well, I suppose this has gone on long enough. I'll put the book back on the pedestal now. If you're inclined to test your knowledge again, I have plenty more questions I could ask you. And I won't be giving you any more easy questions either. The next ones will be more difficult. <laughs> Do I want to do more? Screw it. Let's do I'd it. I'd like to answer more questions. What governmental body directly preceded the Ministry of Magic? Uh. Preceded. So came after the Wizards Council? International Confederation of Wizards. Let's do this one. The International Confederation of Wizards. No. no that's incorrect. Boo. The answer ah, is the Wizards Council. I almost had the it. Wizards Council disbanded in 1707 after the creation of the International Statute of Wizarding Secrecy, which required a more structured government to support its enforcement. Hmm. Which dragon breed is the smallest? Oh. I definitely don't know this one. Viper, Opal Eye. Let's go with this one. The Antipode and Opalay. No, uh, I'm sorry. Viper the answer tooth. was the Peruvian Viper Tooth. Though the Viper Tooth is the smallest breed, averaging at around 15 feet in length, it is also the fastest breed and feared for its venomous fangs. Who founded the village of Hogsmeade? Hmm. Qu Quincy Hog? Quincy Hog? No. Oh. The answer was Hengist of Woodcroft. <laughs> Darn it. It is believed that Hengist used the Three Broomsticks Inn as his home. The hide behind was accidentally created by crossbreeding a ghoul with what other magical creature? I, I don't know. Is a demiguise a creature? A demiguise. Yes! Oh. While the hide behind has the power of invisibility, those who have seen it have described it as a tall, thin monkey with silver hair. What is the only spell known to repel a lethefold? 
Uh, I don't know. The Patronus charm. Well done. <laughs> the only known survivor of a Lethifold attack was a wizard named Flavius Belby, who was on holiday in Papua New Guinea at the time. Who published the law of elemental transfiguration? Uh... Lavander Montmorency. That's incorrect. The answer I was looking for was Gamp. One of the principal exceptions well. to Gamp's law is that food cannot be conjured, though it can be summoned. What does the Hogwarts motto translate to? Mm. Knowledge is the real magic. No, the answer oh. was never tickle a sleeping dragon. <laughs> In Latin, the Hogwarts motto is Draco Dormian's Nunquam Titillandus. Uh, Which okay. magical creature is the only one known to produce eggs through its mouth? Uh, what? Uh, an Ashwinder. The Ashwinder. That's incorrect. Oh. The correct answer was the rune's paw. What, baby? According to parcel mouths, hmm. each of the rune's paw's three heads serves a different function. The left head is the planner, the middle is the dreamer, and the right is the critic. Where is Ilvermorny School of Witchcraft and Wizardry located? Ilvermorny. Uh, Pyrenees, sure. The Pyrenees. No, Ilvermorny is actually located on Mount Greylock. The American school was founded in the 17th century by Esalt Sare and James Stewart. What is the most powerful love potion known to wizard kind? <laughs> oh, love potion. Uh, I don't know. Amortensia. That's the answer. Oh, wow. Amatentia smells differently to every person, according to what they find attractive. Such as dusty book covers, or... <clears throat> Are you interested in continuing on to mm. the next round? They're no. The difficult questions. I failed at all of those. I don't have time for another quiz at the moment. That's fine. Come and find me if you'd like to try later. I thought I was a wizarding I the nerd. I put on the pedestal for you. Revel Revel you want to make quick work of this. Professor Weasley's tasks are complete. I should attend Transfiguration. Mm. Alright. Let's go see if those Thestrals are done. Look at the baby! Hey, buddy! Hi! Aren't you cute? What do you know? Give you some food? Aww. I should let Deke know about the newborn <laughs> Cute! There's Mama. Will it stay a baby or will it get big? I wonder. Where's dad? Uh, where's the other one at? Oh, there it is. Revenia. Wait. Come back. There we go. Alright. Thank you for your time. Deke. Hello, Deke. You'll be pleased to know that a little Thestral was born. How wonderful to have more Thestrals in our world. Such misunderstood beasts. I'm sorry that we both can see Thestrals, Deke. Deke is privileged to see such majestic beasts. But sometimes wishes Deke couldn't. 
Deke is to blame. What do you mean to blame? Years ago, Deke's master ordered Deke to help him capture a phoenix, the rarest of all beasts, that master had spotted high on a cliff. The phoenix was the most beautiful beast Deke had ever seen. Deke begged master to leave her be. When Deke hesitated to climb up the cliff as ordered, Deke had to punish himself. As Deke punished himself, Master grew angrier and angrier, and in his frustration, cast at the regal bird. Deke suspects the phoenix was protecting eggs when it swooped down in fear and fury. Before Deke could reach him, Master fell from the cliff. Deke stayed on that cliffside for days, punishing himself before Tobbs found him. Oh, that's sad. What a horrible tale, Deke. I'm so sorry. Deke has only told Professor Weasley that story. And now yourself. Deke often wonders what became of that phoenix. Deke feels fortunate to be at Hogwarts now, helping you rescue beasts. Perhaps Deke can make amends for what came before. Hmm. So sorry, Deke. Okay, well. Ten Transfiguration. 